What's going on, y'all? What's going on, FFA? What's going on, delegates? Yeah! I am so happy to be with y'all today. Let me tell you why. I am happy every time I get an opportunity to be with the FFA members because I believe that this is the greatest youth organization in all of the world, and y'all ought to be very proud to be part of the FFA. You really should be. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, I only got 30 minutes, so the time, the, the clock is my enemy. I come from a predominantly black family. I don't know if y'all can tell that or not. <laughs> and let me tell you this. That combined with the fact that I'm an ordained minister is a lethal combination when it comes to time. Y'all give a brother some chicken wings, I'll talk all day long. <laughs> but in the words of King Henry VIII, as he spoke to each of his six wives, I won't keep you long, baby. <laughs> but <laughs> I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about what it really takes, what it really, really uh, requires for you to amplify all throughout the world, all your life, regardless of whether you stay in your community or, or regardless of whether you go to uh, the remotest part of the earth. It's really important that you listen to this message today because I, I've made this message just for you. Here, here's my thesis. I want you to hold on to the wisdom of mama and daddy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, I know. I know. I realize that, that daddy's old-fashioned, that mama doesn't know the, the difference between Instagram and instant mashed potatoes. I got that. <laughs> I understand that. I want you to hold on to the wisdom of your ag teachers. So you got ag teachers who are some of the most incredibly loyal people you will ever meet in your entire life. They are committed to you, not just during your high school, not during college, but those ag teachers are committed to you for life. They really are. They're in your corner. You think about this. You have a great opportunity to really impact the world. And that opportunity will only come if you take advantage of it. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, said an opportunity missed is an opportunity lost. Here's a great opportunity for you to really grow. How do you do that? By holding on to the knowledge that you learn in school, but by holding on with the other hand to that wisdom that comes from those ag teachers, that comes from a good mama, that comes from a good daddy, that comes from grandma, mamma, mima, Medea. I don't care what you call the lady. <laughs> but it comes from all those different sources. Holding on to the wisdom of a grandfather, an uncle, or an aunt, because they are where you want to go. And in order for you to really make a difference, you really need more than just textbook knowledge. Textbook knowledge is good. It's important. But while you're taking the tests, while you're in the class, watch closely the lives of your ag teachers. Glean from their wisdom. Learn from them. They're in your corner. While you're spending those final years at home, learn everything you possibly can from your mother. Learn from your father. Hold on to that wisdom. I want to tell you all something. That's what's desperately needed in this day and age of ours. We live in a society where the television is on in the average American home eight hours a day, according to Hal Himmelstein, who wrote the book Television Myth in the American Mind. We live in such a shallow, superficial culture that it's far more important to look good than to be good. Mm -hmm. We live in a society where, where all of a sudden our, our morality base is eroding every single day. Y'all, we live in a very different time where the world needs what the FFA has, common decent sense. They need it. Our, our, our world needs it. Think about what y'all what learn. You learn everything from entrepreneurship to parliamentary procedure. You learn about the Robert's Rules of Order to showing livestock. You, you are preparing for careers all the way across the academy. Your, your opportunity to really show out 
and, and impact and, and, and amplify is, is great and it will be even greater if you can hold on to some of that wisdom. Hold, our country needs it. We, we are turning uh, right into wrong every day and turning wrong into right. Every, our country needs y'all. We, we need you to be your best. I'm so sick and tired of everything being shaded and, and jaded by where you live and, and the name on the back of your jeans and the color of your skin. I, I, I've heard it said recently that black lives matter. I'm here to tell you that according to Almighty God, all lives matter. We need something around this place. All lives matter. All lives matter. We need decency to come back into our communities. We need common sense to come back into our halls of justice. We need morality to once again drape the landscape of our neighborhoods. We need people who come out of the FFA to run for governor, to run for mayor, to run for Congress, to run for president, to be good mamas, to be good daddies, to be painters and beauticians and lawyers and doctors and teachers. The world needs what y'all have. I'm talking about get out of here and go amplify those values that you learn from a mama, from a daddy, from a grandma, from a grandpa, from an ag teacher. Values that will cause you to stand up for that which you know is right. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, I love y'all. I really do. I, I thank you, baby girl. <laughs> Let me tell you all something. I grew up in San Francisco. I got any Californians out here today. What's up, y'all? I've been, I've been in Texas for a long time, for 20 years. And, 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 and the wonderful thing about Texas is I have learned, being on that football coaching staff with them Aggies, I have learned how to hunt. I've learned how to fish. Y'all, I got cowboy boots. I got cowboy hats. I drive a pickup truck. Can I tell y'all something? I'm a black neck redneck. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Let me tell you about my first Aggie teachers. I'm going to tell y'all about my first Aggie teachers. Uh, a, a, a daddy who was a third grade dropout, but yet the wisest man I ever met in my life, and, and a mama from Okmogi, Oklahoma. Anybody here from Oklahoma? Anybody in the house? Two God-fearing parents. My, my mother loved God with all her heart and, and carried a gun in her purse until the day she died. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter if there was a permit needed or no permit. Didn't matter if the government said yes or no. She had peace be still in her purse. Do you all hear what a brother's saying to you? They, they, they taught us one fundamental lesson. We don't want you to go be great brown people or great white people or great black people. We are rearing you to be great people who do great things. That, 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 those were the first ag teachers. My daddy left school in the third grade to help out on the family farm, but just because he left school doesn't mean his education stopped. Mark Twain once said, I've never allowed my schooling to get in the way of my education. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and talk to him, big daddy. He kept learning. <laughs> he kept learning, kept growing, kept challenging himself. Learn how to read by reading the local paper. Learn how to write by writing home during World War II. As soon as World War II was over, he moved to San Francisco. He met my mother. My mother was a bad mamma jamma back in the day, baby, let me tell you. She was fine as wine. And, 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 and they got married, they reared their family. Watch this, y'all. My daddy gets a job as a cook. At the height of his career, He's only making like $500 a month. This is in the 50s with a family to rear in San Francisco. But that doesn't even stop him from making a difference. That doesn't stop him from amplifying because of the platform that he had, a platform of parents who feared God, who loved this country, and who were farmers. Can I get an amen, somebody? Our country needs to understand, our country needs to understand one fundamental thing. If you think about it, every citizen who claims citizenship in the United States of America ought to be in the FFA. You know why? Because this country started 
rural and agrarian. This country started with a love for the land, a need for the land, a necessity for the land, and a necessity for us to tend the land. That's how this country started. And that's the platform that I stand on with grandparents who were farmers, with, with, a, with a father and a mother who were farmers. My father gets a job at a school that trains merchant seamen. He sails all over the world as a cook in a 30-year career at California Maritime Academy. This third grade dropout sails all over the world 10 times over, learns bits and pieces of five foreign languages. I want you to listen to how my ag teachers impacted me with simple lessons, lessons like this. Boy, I, th I thought my middle name was Boy until I was about 25. Boy, you'd rather be an hour early than a minute late. I'm talking about wisdom that you can't get from a textbook. Only wisdom that comes from an ag teacher modeling that, that comes from a mama, that comes from a daddy. You'd rather be an hour early than a minute late. Listen to this. Boy, don't judge people. What do you mean, daddy? When you judge people, you miss an opportunity to get to know them. You miss an opportunity to, to impact them. They, they might be just that person that's hurting, that might need your help, but if you judge them, you'll likely walk away from them. Did I mention he was a third grade dropout? Then he dropped Jonathan Swift on me, who said on one occasion, vision is the ability to see the invisible. Don't judge. That third grade dropout ag teacher taught me, be kind, son. Kind deeds are never lost. Be kind. You know, I get a chance to do a lot of NFL chapels in the National Football League. And I'll, I'll go to these different NFL teams and, 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 and I'll watch those guys do amazing things like bench press 250 pounds 25 times but the thing that amazes me the most is when I see one of those young rich millionaires open the door for somebody show an act of kindness to someone do you know when you show an act of kindness young folks you're just increasing your platform to amplify the virtues and the values of your family when when when, when you when you demonstrate an act of kindness you literally stop the world how many of y'all have heard of George Washington Carver? Great American. Forget the sweet potatoes for a minute. Forget the peanuts for a minute. George Washington Carver said on one occasion, when common people do common things in uncommon ways, they command the attention of the world. I just described your grandmother. Mm-hmm. I just described your grandfather. I just described my parents. Common people doing things in uncommon ways, like showing kindness, and as a result, stopping the attention of the world. My parents were teaching me how to amplify as I was growing up. They were my first ag teachers. There's a wisdom that they had that you couldn't get in a lot of other places. They taught me this. They taught me, son, make sure your servant's towel is bigger than your ego. I'm here to tell you that ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. Boy, I wish y'all heard what I was saying right now. My country mother would say it like this boy you walk around like your stuff don't stink y'all hear what I'm saying to you when you're full of yourself listen to me when you're full of yourself when it's all about you you are participating in a shallow superficial culture and forget about amplifying you ain't helping nobody but your three best friends me myself and I but when you can break free from the chains and shackles of that sense of self-importance and reach down and lift somebody up because of the values that you have. You are espousing the best of the FFA, the best of your ag teacher, the best of your mother, the best of your father. You are making a difference in a world that desperately needs you. I'm telling you, FFA, this country needs you. This country needs you. They need your values. They need your wisdom. They need your compassion. They need your empathy. They need your judgment. They need your character. You know what I love about FFA, young folks? Y'all tell the truth. Y'all think the best of people, and y'all do what you say you're gonna do. That's wisdom that came from your mama. That's wisdom that came from your dad. That's wisdom that came from grandma and grandpa. That's wisdom on display by ag teachers that I know all across this country doing that which is right, not because it's politically correct. Who cares about political correctness? I care about doing things because it's the right thing to do. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you?
I want to tell you something, friends. Listen carefully, young folks. Y'all are our future leaders. I am very mindful of the fact that I could be speaking in the presence of the next president of the United States right here today. I want you to listen to me, Miss President. I said, I want you to listen to me, Miss President. Uh huh. I, I want you to listen to me, Mr. President. You might be sitting in the balcony and roll 875 today, but you stay with this FFA. And one day you might find your address, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I want you to listen to me, Mr. Future President. Listen, Ms. President, don't, don't, don't stray from the simple wisdom of your mama and your daddy. Don't stray. I'm 59 years old, and I still, every single day, try to show up an hour early. Every single day, I try to not to judge anybody. Everybody deserves dignity. And I'm 59 years old, and I try to be kind every single day. I try to make sure that I'm serving somebody. Uh, there's this great, great basketball coach who's now passed away. His name is John Wooden. Those of you in Southern California, he, he used to coach at UCLA, and, and he won a lot of championships. ESPN called him the coach of the 20th century, the greatest coach of the 20th century. You know what I love about Coach Wooden? Forget all of the accomplishments as a coach. Forget about all the championships. He was caught often during the week when there were no cameras around, taking a push broom, watch this, and sweeping his own gym floor. What are you saying to us, Dr. Rigsby? You, you want to make a difference? You want to make an impact? You want to grow by holding on to the wisdom of your ag teachers, of your mama, and of your daddy, so, so that you are amplifying? Go find your broom. Uh, figure out where your broom is. Go find your broom and use your broom every single. You talk about growing your influence. John Maxwell said that's what leadership is. It's influence, nothing more, nothing less. Your ability to influence people within the sphere of your periphery will determine whether or not you're amplifying, whether or not you're making an impact. I want to challenge you to amplify everything you do. You ought to serve with dignity, serve with excellence, make excellence in your life. Dominant, prominent, preeminent, zenith, number one, top drawer, top shelf. You be the greatest person that you can be. Forget about color. Forget about zip code. Forget about area code. Forget about who designed your jeans. <laughs> Forget about all that stuff. The goal is not to look good. The goal is to be good. And that's why I love the FFA. It reinforces that. I'm 59 years old, and I'm still holding on to the wisdom of ag teachers, my mama and my daddy. I'd give anything to be an FFA member. I feel like I'm part of y'all's family. I've been part of this family for almost 20 years. 59, still holding on to that wisdom of a mama who said, boy, if you think you can or if you think you can't, you're right. 59, and still holding on to the wisdom of a daddy who said, on one occasion, quoting Henry Ford, he said, boy, daddy's never going to have a problem if you aim high and miss, but I'm going to have a real issue if you aim low and hit. Boy, I don't want you to ever hide behind your color. Now, I got about 17 years old, and I thought I knew everything. I'm working at Jack in the Box. Uh, Y'all ever hear of Jack in the Box? I'm making $1.65 an hour at Jack in the Box. I got an afro so big I can't get in the Volkswagen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? <laughs> and anyway, I come home after work one day and I got an attitude. My father said, boy, what's wrong with you? I said, that white man over there at Jack in the Box wants me to scrub toilets and clean gutters. I didn't sign up to do that. I fry French fries. I fry tacos. I'm a French fry specialist. I ain't sign up to scrub no toilets. My father's first comment. Uh, boy, what does the color of that man's skin have to do with you displaying excellence? I could tell right then that this conversation wasn't going to go the way I thought it was going to go. He said, son, who signs your paycheck? And I told him. He said, let me tell you something. When, when, as long as he signs your paycheck, you do what he tells you to do. Mm -hmm. You listen to this wisdom, y'all. Now, when you own that restaurant or that franchise, you do whatever you want. But until such time, you do what he wants you to do. Now, this is what daddy wants you to do right now. I want you to leave your car in the driveway, walk back to Jack in the Box, volunteer for an eight-hour shift 
of doing nothing but scrubbing toilets. And when I talk to your boss in a couple of days, he better tell me that that Ricky Rigsby is the best toilet scrubbing brother he's ever hired in his life. What's my point? What's my point? You can't get that kind of wisdom even at the finest schools in the world. You can only get wisdom like that from an ag teacher who's lived it, from a mama who's lived it, from a daddy who's lived it, from grandparents, from aunts and uncles who, who they've lived it. But not only that, they want to pass it on to you. Why? Because they want you to have a foundation on which to stand so that you can amplify the, the virtues and, and, and the values of what makes America truly great. And I'm going to tell you, what makes America truly great is keeping your word, is, is looking out for folks, is, is making sure that you're not so busy that you can't help nobody. I don't know any of y'all here, but I can tell you something about your grandparents. They, they worked hard. Am I right? Say yes. They worked hard. They, many of them worked two jobs. They, they, they were working, 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 working. But I guarantee you this about your grandparents. Despite how busy they were, they always made time to help somebody in need. That's a wisdom that has eluded us in 2015. I want to tell you something. There's a wisdom that your parents and grandparents and teachers have that you need to get to that next level. And it's your responsibility to catch it to model it and to pass it on. That is, if you want to amplify. I I'm talking to y'all because I am mindful that there are a lot of leaders in this room this morning, and I want to challenge you with every ounce of energy I have to be the best you can be, to make a difference. I I'm 59, and I'm still holding on to this wisdom. Boy, yes sir, if you do something, if you do a job, you do it right. Now, I know it ought to be you do it well, but I like that old school vernacular. If you're going to do a job, you do it right. I'm thinking about a young boy in Los Angeles. All he wanted to do was play Little League Baseball. His mother couldn't even afford to buy him a glove. He goes into the pantry and gets a paper bag, fashions it into a glove, finds a raggedy old tennis ball and throws it against the back wall of his apartment complex. When he does play Little League, he's good. I mean, he's really good. He's so good, he gets a, a scholarship at a good ag school called Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Oh, yeah, baby. And, and then after college, he gets drafted by the San Diego Padres. And, and then later, he helps the St. Louis Cardinals win a World Series. And, and here's the bottom line. About 11 or 12 years ago, when Ozzie Smith walked into the Hall of Fame, he said, and I quote, All my life I've been told what I could not do. But I decided to pursue excellence, and I was guided by one motto. Good enough isn't good enough if it can be better. And better isn't good enough if it can be best. Young folks, I'm talking about a wisdom you can't buy. I'm talking about a wisdom you can't barter. I'm talking about a wisdom you can't collect from any other source other than those who have walked through difficult times and now they're able and willing and desiring to invest in you. I'm talking about that ag teacher, that ag teacher who's dedicated her life, dedicated his life to helping others rise up. I'm talking about a mama who's prayed for you all your life. I'm talking about a daddy who'd lay down his life for you. I'm talking about a grand set of grandparents who are totally committed to you. Hold on to that wisdom. Hold, it'll take you places you can't believe. It'll open doors that are previously closed. It'll sit you at tables where you don't belong. That simple wisdom of not judging folks, telling the truth, thinking the best of people, doing what you say you're going to do, showing up early, making sure that you're a servant, pushing a broom, doing your best. I'm telling you, y'all, get ready to change the world because the world needs what the FFA has. Can I hear y'all this morning? Let me tell you something. The greatest lesson I learned from my ag teacher, mama and daddy, was this one. It started back in the 70s. It was back in the 70s that I met the finest woman I've ever met in my life. Back in my day, we'd have called her a brick house. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, she was fine. I said she was fine, y'all. Mmm, -hmm, fine. You know, when a guy sees a, a pretty woman, we can talk to her. Hey, what's up, girl? How you doing? But when a woman is super fine, a guy will go right back to third grade. <laughs> and that's what happened to all of us guys this night after a football game. 
You know what? Back in the 70s, ladies didn't like offensive linemen. Ladies like quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. Any former or current quarterbacks or running backs or wide receivers, raise your hands. Oh, a lot of you. Wow. Punks. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, we go to this dance and we all see this woman and she's fine. Find out her name is Trina, Trina Williams. And so at, at, at one point, I decide I'm going to go dance with her. I, I get out on the dance floor and I ask Trina for her phone number. True story. Trina was the first woman, in, actually, Trina was the only woman who gave me her actual real telephone number in college. The only one. I mean, I called Pizza Hut one night looking for Shaniqua. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Well, while I got y'all on the line, let a brother get a double meat combo if I could. I called Trina the next day. I asked her to go to Baskin and Robbins ice cream parlor. We had to walk six miles because my car wasn't working, but I made her laugh the whole way. Hey, fellas, can I tell y'all something? If you can just be kind, these young ladies love a gentleman, don't you ladies? Just, just be kind. And, 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 and they don't mind ice cream either. Can I get a witness? They like ice cream? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, and, and it don't matter if it's vanilla or strawberry or chocolate. Y'all hear what I'm saying, dude? And so we go there, and then we go on a second date. And then we go on a third date, a fourth date. Oh, goony goo goo. We go on a fifth date. It's on like a pot of neck bones. We go on a sixth date. I take her home to visit my parents. My daddy, my hero, pulls me to the side after meeting Trina and whispers in my ear, is she psycho? But anyway, we date a year, two years, three years, four years we date. By now, Trina's a senior in college. I'm still a freshman, but I'm working some things out. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Martin Luther King had a dream. Big Daddy's got a plan. I'm just trying to, I'm so glad I graduated in four terms. Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan. If you ain't laughing at that, you need Jesus real quick now. <laughs> so it's time to propose. I got down on one knee. I couldn't get back up, <laughs> but I got down on one knee. And she said, she said yes. She said yes. I marry the finest woman I've ever met in my life. She said, yeah. Y'all ever go to a wedding and you hear this before the wedding starts? How in the world did he get her? And that was my own family saying that. We get married. We have a couple children. Life is great. And then one day, everybody say one day. You always have one of those days that changes everything. She finds a lump in her left breast, breast cancer. Six years after that diagnosis, me and my two little boys walked up to mommy's casket. And for a while, my heart didn't beat. I know that there's some of you in here, I'm mindful of the fact that you've had to walk up and say goodbye to a mommy, a daddy, a brother, a sister, a grandma, a grandpa, a friend. And, and I have to be honest with you, in my case, if it wasn't for my faith in God, I wouldn't be standing here today. I just have to be honest with y'all and tell you. If it, if it wasn't for my two little boys, I'd have had no reason to go on. But let me, let me tell you what the wisdom was that sustained me. It came from an uneducated third grade dropout who happened to be my daddy, my first ag teacher. He's at the casket and he's crying. I'd never seen that big old Texan cry before. And he realizes that I'm right behind him. And so he gets himself together and he turns and he puts those big arms around me and he says three words that changed my life right there at the casket. He said, son, just stand, just stand. You know what I've learned since? That was almost 20 years ago, that, that there's no way you can impact unless you're standing. And there's no way you can amplify unless you're standing. What are you saying to us, Dr. Rigsby? You're going to face difficult times. Some of you already have. Keep standing. Even when folks lie on you, keep standing. E even, even when relationships go sour, keep standing. Even if you don't get into your favorite college, keep standing. God's got a plan for you. 
No matter what, you just keep standing. You keep standing. So I kept standing, and y'all ain't going to believe what happened. A while later, my heart starts beating again. I'm speaking somewhere, and right in the middle of my speech, I spot the finest woman I have ever met in my life again. I kid you not, it happened twice in my life. It was unbelievable. As a matter of fact, the first thing that Janet did after we got married was she adopted my little boys, fulfilling Trina's last wish that her babies not go through life without a mommy. And then we had more kids. We had more kids. Today, four boys from 33 all the way down to 15. In fact, the youngest, his name is Joshua. His nickname is Pup. Pup is, is, is the pup of the litter. Pup is with me on this trip, having a ball in Louisville. Pup told me, he said, Daddy, cameraman, get ready to, for this. He said, Daddy, I know what young people like. He said, young people like cool socks. So you wear these socks to the FFA, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Gotta turn them out, baby. But let me tell you this, and I gotta go. Let me tell you this. Let me go back 20 years. Two days before Trina died, no hair because of chemotherapy, a tummy that pooched out because of a liver no longer working. She weighed about 80 pounds. I'm watching her from the kitchen. She's in the family room sitting on a couch surrounded by pillows to ease some of the pain. And she's folding a shirt in front of our youngest son at the time. And she says, Andrew, mama is not always going to be here to show you how to fold a shirt. You have to learn on your own. She was saying goodbye to our youngest son. And it so moved me that I walked over to the couch and I sat down and in the clearest voice I have ever heard, she said something to me that I want to leave with you. She said, honey, I said, what is it, Trina? She said, it doesn't matter to me any longer how long I live. What matters to me most is how I live. I want to ask you all a question. How you living? Because how you live will determine whether you're taking advantage of opportunities to one day amplify the virtues and the values of good parents, of good act teachers. How you living? Here's how I hope and pray you're living. I hope you're not judging folks. I hope you're showing up an hour early. I, I hope you're kind to people. I hope your work ethic is strong. I hope that everything you do, you do with excellence. Here's how I hope and pray you're living. I hope you're telling the truth and thinking the best of people and doing what you say you're going to do. And, and, and I know that you are living like that as long as you take advantage of those wisdom sources that are in your life. A dedicated ag teacher, a mama, a daddy, a grandma, a grandpa, building you up, inspiring you, cheering you on so that one day you'll stand on a stage, whether in your little hometown or whether on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and say, world, I am here to not just make an impact, but to amplify all that is great about America. A love of God, a love of country, a love of my fellow man. Here I go, get ready for me, world, and world, let me tell you, here they come, get ready for the FFA. I love y'all, God bless you. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dan. Good job, sir. Thank you. Thank you, delegates. God bless y'all.